All right, Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Now, I, I want to show you an example of this. Okay. Um, actually, today I'm going to show two examples. I'm going to split them up into two videos. But here I want to focus on these three women first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb and the ten virgins today. Um, we're going to start. The it's marriage supper of the Lamb and the ten virgins. It's going to be Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13. Matthew 25. 1 through 13. Alright. And this will be talking, <clears throat> excuse me, about the 10 virgins. So, oops. Right there. We'll go ahead and read that and then we'll talk about it. All right, then so shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to. Let me, uh, let me read it. Because <clears throat> I don't know if the audio is very good, but nevertheless. Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Now I guess before we go further, let me make this easy for you to see. The ten, or I'm sorry, the, excuse me, the, the ten people, or the ten virgins represent all people. Five of them that are wise represent the saved those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the five that are foolish are the unsaved they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ it's that simple you think about the judgment of God what is the judgment of God it's are you saved or are you not saved and when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven it's time the end of time and that judgment is made and that's the cutoff day. And if you are not saved, you are cast in the fire and into uh, the lake of fire. And there are no more opportunities to be saved. It's that simple. That's the judgment of God. It's not judge. It's not. It's not God sitting there and counting up all your sins and determining. You know. Well, that's too many sins. You're going to hell. That's not it at all. It's are you saved? Or are you not saved? And so we can apply this to this parable of the ten virgins. The wise are the saved and, and the, the foolish are the unsaved. And think about this here. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple the simple would mean you could I relate it to to a dummy like me all right so I'm big time dummy but I can be wise by the scripture the scripture makes me wise see imagine somebody dumb like me and then also not believing in the scripture that would be extra dumb all right so anyways Matthew 25, the five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. That means they did not have the Spirit of God. They were not born of God. The oil represents the Spirit of God. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They, the wise are born of the Spirit of God. While the, bride, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. 
And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. This is representative of the Lord coming in the clouds of heaven. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. See, the foolish that have the oil are saved. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. The foolish had no oil. They're not saved. The wise, they have the oil. They are saved. Give us your oil. And the foolish are asking the wise, hey, help us out here. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. All right, so yeah, there's a verse that uh, just came. I see if it, this relates at all. Oh, let's see if I can find it first here. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. Not sure if it applies or not. Just came into my head. Now, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. And that means it was too late at that time. Because the bridegroom was coming. That represents the Lord Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven all right and at that point it's too late either you're saved or not saved it's the judgment of God all right and afterward came also the other virgin saying Lord Lord open to us but he answered and said verily I say unto you I know you not watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Alright, so you could look at this a couple of ways, couldn't you? You don't know the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. Well, I'll get into that later. Alright, so then there's another parable. Alright, so, I mean, this is very simple stuff. It really is. But if you're not saved, you're not going to be able to see it. I don't think. You're not going to want to see it for sure, but to make something else out of this is to do damage to the Word of God. It, you're not helping anybody to explain this any other way. There is no other way to explain this. This is the parable. The wise are the saved. The foolish are the unsaved. There is no other way. Now, let's listen to what these women have to say. But the wise took slept, and at midnight the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out. The foolish said unto the wise, Give not so, let sell, and buy. Ready went in with him. Afterward came off and shut the door. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Okay, so to better understand the ceremony of the marriage supper of the Lamb, the ten virgins were brought into the millennial reign of Christ in their mortal bodies. What in the world is going on here? Are these ladies women? Are they Mormons or something? Jehovah's Witnesses? Are they Muslim or something? I don't understand what in the world is going on here. And the ten virgins were brought into the millennial reign of Christ in their mortal bodies. We are referring to the tribulation saints. Those... Uh, that is unbelievable. Listen to this. Christ in their mortal bodies. We are referring to the tribulation saints. We're referring to the tribulation saints. 
this whenever I hear tribulation saints that's a dispensationalist it's, it's like a whole nother religion it's no different than Mormonism and Catholicism and Islam and Jehovah's Witness and you know Manson's family and all that sort of stuff those tribulation saints are understood to be the Jewish believers and the Those Gentiles that were saved during the tribulation. Let's not confuse the nation of Israel or the Jewish believers as Old Testament saints. Old Testament saints lived in the Old Testament times and were not part of the tribulation. We understand Testament. All right, so she is saying that Christ rejecting Jews are the saints of God. They're saints. They're saints. People that reject Jesus Christ are saints. Now, from if I take a step back and I, I see somebody saying that, I'm thinking that's the devil talking. People that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are saints, according to you, the devil. I mean, really, how else do you, how else can I look at that? understood to be the Jewish believers and those Gentiles that were saved during the tribulation. Let's not confuse the nation of Israel or the Jewish believers as Old Testament. Well, I'm telling you, this is absolutely confusing. The nation of Israel, we are the nation of Israel. We Christians today are the nation of Israel. So when we read in the Old Testament and we're reading about the nation of Israel, or when we're reading about the children of God, we're reading about our people. We are the nation of God. There should be no confusion about it. None whatsoever. All right. I mean, to suggest we're not is ridiculous. And then to go one step further and to say... The, those people today that reject the Lord Jesus Christ they're not they're that you they're the, the the people that reject Jesus are the saints then I mean that's that's like the people that say the sons of God in Genesis 6 are fallen angels I'm a son of God are you saying I'm a fallen angel I mean look you got I'm when I see this, to me, I see the wickedness of these teachers. Pure wickedness. And I, I understand why when the disciples asked Jesus of the end time, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, the very first thing that Jesus says is, take heed that no man deceive you. And then, behold, what have we got in the world today? Utter deception all, everywhere from every angle and relating to every possible Bible scripture anything to do with God uh, just absolute corruption everywhere wickedness everywhere so what am I looking for here oh, I was looking for something else I know what I was looking for So just to, I mean, how do you look at this verse here and say that we Christians are not the holy nation of God? There's not two holy nations of God. There's not people that believe in the Jesus in the Lord Jesus Christ and people that are born with a big nose and dark hair. Flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. Oops. Now, now, I wonder, do these people even read their Bible? Now, I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And so, what are you guys teaching here? And what are they reading from a piece of paper? They're, it, to me, it looks like they're reading from like a script or from what somebody else 
has told them to believe. That does not look like the Bible to me. What's, how, what about this? How about believing the Bible you hold in your hands? I mean, there's so much false teaching out there. It's incredible. It really is. You know, I can't do nothing about it, but I can try my best to show people the truth regarding these particular and these bigger issues in my opinion and this issue of the millennial reign is a bigger issue and I mean, this sort of thing is not a new thing at all in fact I I contend it's worse than ever before ladies women what are you teaching tribulation saints are understood to be the Jewish believers and those Gentiles that were saved during the tribulation so the idea is the tribulation has already passed I guess let's not confuse the nation of Israel or the Jewish believers as Old Testament saints Old Testament saints lived in the Old Testament times and were not part of the tribulation we understand that I don't understand it uh, there is no indication that the tribulation saints, including the Old Testament saints, ever received an immortal or glorified body. <clears throat> and we're not part of the tribulation. We understand that. Uh, there is no indication that the tribulation saints, including the Old Testament saints, ever received an immortal or glorified body. Right. That happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Which may be why some of the virgins still struggled with laziness or procrastination. Whatever it was, it was... What are you talking about? This is... This has nothing to do with laziness and pronostication. They didn't believe. That's what the parable's about. They did not believe. And then when they saw the Lord coming in the clouds of heaven, they said, hey, save us too. And the Lord says, I never knew you. And shut the door on them. I know you not. Right there. I don't know you. It was, it was unwise or foolish behavior, which is interesting when you think about it that way, because you understand that they still have mortal bodies, and we are in our, will be in our glorified bodies. Well, that's true in the sense that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. This is in a moment. This is not a period of time. It's a, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed at this point and so um, it was a weakness or a so when that happens it's too late for the unsaved there's no oh you want to be saved too no it's too late the door is shut law in their lack of preparation even though Satan had been removed during the millennium and there was no temptation or enticements uh, now we're getting into Revelation 20 Right. Even though Satan had been removed during the millennium, law just throw random ver the st ideas out there. That's great. At this point, and so um, it was a weakness or a flaw in their lack of preparation. Even though Satan had been removed during the millennium, and there was no temptation or enticements brought enticements brought about by the enemy of their. F That's not true at all there's no temptations brought about by the enemy that's not true at all during this thousand years that's not true at all millennium and there was no temptation or enticements brought enticements brought that's not in the bible it's not in revelation 20 you're just making stuff up and it's not her to be fair it's some man that doesn't know the scripture and she's just loyal to her man. Satan had been removed during the millennium and there was no temptation or enticements brought, enticements brought about by the enemy of their faith. There were still some weaknesses in the way they 
processed their thoughts. This is clearly a frailty of the physical body. And so it's not because of a temptation from the enemy that, that they, you know, lacked. It was because of their physical limitations. So, <clears throat> they... Tell me if I'm getting this right. They're, they were not saved, not because they were tempted by the enemy and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they were not saved because of physical limitations. What they want, they didn't have a big nose and dark hair. Is that what you're teaching? Lacked, it was because of their physical limitations. Uh, this, this is insanity. Isn't that what she's saying? People are not saved because of physical limitations. Implying that people that are saved have those physical qualities needed to be saved. Uh, I'm about done with these ladies. So the five slumbered as they all did, but they all but they should have been in search of more oil for their lamps. They got if you apply that to what's happening today, if you're not saved, now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to believe. If you put it off, man, and the Lord Jesus comes in the air, it's too late. So you want to get right with God today. And how do you get right with God? You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple. It's faith, man. It's always been about faith. What are you going to go outside and, and help some lady across the street? That's not going to save you. That's not a sin. That's a good deed for sure. But your good deeds and your sins have nothing to do with salvation. All right. So, I mean, look, this is so much confusion. And you wonder what what's going on in the churches today. I don't think these ladies understand what they're getting out of these. What are these? Like notebooks or something? I used to have notebooks in high school. I don't know what these are exactly. It doesn't look like the Bible to me. It looks like somebody's brainwashed these ladies, wrote it down on a piece of paper and said, My word is God. And they're just trying to echo and explain what they're reading and they have no understanding at all. And uh, this is at the probably the worst teaching I've ever seen. I mean this on the ten vir on the ten virgins because this stuff is not complicated. It's not complicated at all. The five wise virgins are saved. The five foolish are not saved. It's that simple. And what in the world are you doing going on? about people not having physical qualities or having physical limitations. What what's that? As about? they all did, but they all but they should have been in search of more oil for their lamps. They got shut out of the marriage supper of the lamb. From a historical and cultural view, the parable of the ten virgins is engulfed in Eastern customs. Where it get kind of interesting um, so the marriage the actual marriage ceremony would take place outdoors, usually by water, a stream or a creek. Then the bride's friends or family would escort her to her father's house or some other relative's house where preparations were being made for another ceremony called the marriage supper. So they were married and then they would have another ceremony. The bridegroom would stay behind and come a little later at an unannounced time. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, we have our reception right after the wedding. The bride and groom enter together. In this case, the bride would come later. The ten virgins were friends and perhaps relatives.
Right. If I'm going to be fair, that is interesting. The old custom, she claims, is that the bridegroom will come at a time when nobody would know. That's an inter that's, it's interesting thought or an idea, for sure. The relatives of the bridegroom. The bridegroom, according to their customs, was a newly married man. As custom went, the virgins would take up lamps that resembled something like torches. Some of them were hollowed out to contain oil and needed to be trimmed. They would go out to wait. All right, so that's that's all very interesting. Uh, 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 to, you know, particular people that were, you know, the customs of the marriage and all this and all that. That's great. That's, that is interesting stuff. But what good is all that knowledge going to do you if you don't understand this very simple parable that the five wise virgins are saved, the five foolish virgins were not saved? What good does it do you to know the whole history of the marriage supper? If you don't know this simple parable, really, it does he no good at all? And I'm going to end it there. Uh, I can't hear these ladies very well anyways. And uh, if they get that wrong, <laughs> they're probably getting everything wrong. I mean, quite honestly. You got to get it all right. You got to get it all right. All right?